Welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we take a look at the biggest change we've received with the latest season update. So consider subscribing to the channel. And let's get started. First of all, I've been complaining a lot lately about the pointless essences being introduced for the Necromancer. For some reason, the developers decided to significantly improve the mechanics that were usually not used. Because of that, the last explosion Necromancer build I shared on my channel has become even more powerful. This is mainly due to the increased damage from the explosion of skeletons and scythe. It was also decided to improve the mechanics of corpse explosion, but let's start with general but significant changes. Heliquary Gauntlet Leaderboard Players can begin a Heliquary Gauntlet raid as frequently as they like and will receive bountiful boons such as random set items random legendary items, demonic remains, and more, for their first completion. Players who land a top 10 spot on the leaderboard for their server by the end of the week will receive the Voidwound Gauntlet Champion Avatar frame to sport during the Heliquary Gauntlet season. If that player can retain their top 10 spot until the season ends, they'll get to keep their Avatar frame for good. So I added a new Warband activity. I personally haven't had a chance to do it yet because people in my warband don't meet the requirements for this activity yet. So unfortunately our combat rating is quite important now. In addition, minor changes have also been made to regular raids. Haliquary raids have been updated in two ways. When a player dies more than once during a raid, resurrecting them will incur an increasing cooldown. When Heliquary bosses enrage, they will periodically emit a damaging pulse which scales in damage after each use. Class balance and legendary item adjustments, reduction of incoming damage for ranged classes, the Demon Hunter, Necromancer, and Wizard classes will now have an innate 15% reduction of incoming damage from players. The Barbarian, Crusader, and Monk classes will continue to have an innate 30% reduction of incoming damage from players, as they always have. And it's a fair change. At the moment when Mio classes already have a lot of skills that allow you to dash to the target, it was incomprehensible why they had such a big advantage in terms of reduced damage. Now that difference is halved. But it was also decided to eliminate the PvP tower bonus from the game. Of course, Towers, we've received a variety of feedback around one tower bonus and have adjusted both this tower and improved Cursed Shards gathering to better balance accused towers. Starting with the next Accursed Towers season, the 20% increase to PvP damage provided by the Tower of Fortitude will be replaced with a bonus that provides a 10% increase to life in Battleground, Challenge of the Immortal, Rite of Exile, and Shadow War. This is another change that prior to the update was simply too much of an advantage for players who had the required tower. But let's take a look at the changes for individual classes. Barbarian skill and legendary affix adjustments. The following represent adjustments made to the base version of each skill. Leap. The cooldown has been reduced from 12 to 9 seconds. And Dying Rage. The duration has decreased from 4.75 to 4 seconds. The healing amount received from damage done to players during and dying rage has decreased from 30% to 15%. The healing amount will remain at 30% for damage done to monsters during and dying rage. The following represent adjustments made to the existing functionality of several legendary items. Animal Instinct. Leap's time to reach maximum charge has been reduced from 1 to 0.5 seconds. Cracklefell. Chain Spear will now hurl three projectiles, but the same enemy can only be hit by one projectile per cast. Charred Iron. Chain Spear will now hurl three projectiles, but the same enemy can only be hit by one projectile per cast. Impaler's Breath. Chain Spear will now hurl three projectiles, but the same enemy can only be hit by one projectile per cast. Sundered Legacy. 
Wrath of the Berserker's burn damage has been reduced. I consider this another very fair change. Undying Rage gave the Barbarian a huge advantage. Additionally, we never know if this skill is active or will be. Therefore, in my opinion, an animation should be added which will allow you to easily recognize what stage the Barbarian is at. Crusader skill and legendary affix adjustments, the following represents an adjustment made to the base version of this skill. Sweep attack. The time to reach maximum charge has been reduced from 1 to 0.5 seconds. The following represent adjustments made to the existing functionality of several legendary items. Adamant Lash. Spinning shield will now be unable to stun the same player more than once every 3 seconds. Air Splitter. Falling Sword's time to reach maximum charge has been reduced from 1 to 0.5 seconds. Impassable Sanctum. Shield Charge now grants immunity to knockbacks for its full duration. Pillager's Greaves. Shield Charge's time to reach maximum charge has been reduced from 1 to 0. 5 seconds. Suspended Rule. Sweep Attacks Uncharged and Fully Charged Damage has been increased. The Recreant. The delay time before Sacred Chain explodes has been reduced from 2 to 1.5 seconds. Demon Hunter skill and legendary affix adjustments. The following represent adjustments made to the base version of each skill. Knife Trap. The arming time has been reduced from 1.4 to 0. 7 seconds. Knife Trap no longer has a restriction on placing more than one trap in the same position. Knockback Shot. The cooldown has been reduced from 12 to 9 seconds. Strafe. The maximum potential channeling time has been increased from 3 to 5 seconds. The following represents an adjustment made to the existing functionality of a legendary item, Shikar. Strafe's damage has been increased. And these changes, along with the previous ones, make the Demon Hunter gains a lot. And from the general opinion of people I learn, that they are seriously considering returning to this class. So it's very possible we'll see Demon Hunters flooding the battlegrounds soon. Monk Legendary Item Adjustments The following represent adjustments made to the existing functionality of several legendary items. Endless Trial Imprisoned Fist Damage has been increased. Gurgle's Familiarity Mystic Strikes Cooldown has been reduced from 12 to 9 seconds. Leering Riptide Wave Strikes Uncharged and Fully Charged Damage has been increased and its time to reach maximum charge has been reduced from 1 to 0.5 seconds. Power of Undulation Wave Strike's damage has been increased, and the maximum potential channeling time has been increased from 3 to 5 seconds. Shimmerlin. Wave of Light's damage has been decreased. Subsequent hits on the same enemy have been reduced from 30% to 25% damage. Will Below. Wave Strike's damage has been increased and the attack's animation will end sooner. Wizard Legendary Affix Adjustments. The following represent adjustments made to the existing functionality of several legendary items. Arcane Intensifiers. Disintegrate's cooldown has been reduced from 12 to 9 seconds. Heart of the Storm. Ice Armor's damage has been increased. Kin's Cryoclasp. Ray of Frost's cooldown has been reduced from 12 to 9 seconds. Robes of the Avalanche. Ray of Frost's damage has been increased. Winter's Eye. Ice Armor's damage has been increased. And here I have to admit that Wizard is currently a class that I would like to change my Necromancer to. Let me know in the comments what do you think about this idea. But for now, let's move on to the Necromancer patch notes. Necromancer skill and legendary item adjustments. The following represent adjustments made to the base version of each skill. Corpse Explosion. Enemies struck by multiple simultaneous explosions now take 30% cumulatively reduced damage for each additional hit instead of the previous 40%. Grim Scythe. The damage has been increased and now generates 3 corpses instead of the previous 2. The following represent adjustments made to the existing functionality of several legendary items. Coals for Eyes. Command Skeleton's explosion damage has been increased. Skeletal champions are now raised every 6 seconds instead of the previous 8. Grave Cutter. Grim Sith's maximum charges have been increased from 1 to 2, and will now generate corpses for each enemy hit. Thrashjaw. 
Grim Sith's maximum charges have been increased from 1 to 2, and will now generate corpses for each enemy hit. So in this case we can evaluate the changes into categories. On the one hand, we get a big buff for things that were hardly playable before the update. On the other hand, someone may judge that he will not be interested in playing a necromancer in this way. So these changes have no meaning in this situation. But in my opinion, it should be appreciated that the developers finally manage to notice the unplayable nature of the necromancer, and I hope that in the near future, they will also look at other necromancer identities. So the new essences introduced to the game will be much more useful and thoughtful. Let's remember that the community of necromancers is one of the largest, so the creators should care about keeping this group of players in the game. So these are the most important changes that have been made. If you are still watching, then click the like button. And if you haven't already, then subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with new episodes. And as always, thanks for watching and have a nice day.